Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. One hundred years ago, 70,000 workers joined forces to construct one of the marvels of human engineering, the Panama Canal. Built on the Isthmus of Panama, this waterway connects the two largest water bodies, the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, reducing hundreds of thousands of miles of journeys around Cape Horn to less than 10 hours. Today, the Panama Canal facilitates the flow of 5% of international maritime trade. Each year, about 10,000 vessels transit the Panama Canal. container ships, tankers, bulk carriers, car carriers, and cruise ships. All ships use this vital passage, ensuring a crucial link between the Americas, East Asia, and Europe. The transit process involves a sophisticated system of locks, water reservoirs, and specialized equipment to ensure a safe and efficient transit. As a lock-type canal, the Panama Canal uses a system of locks to lift and lower ships between sea level and the canal's higher elevation. There are three main sets of locks, Gatun on the Atlantic side and Pedro Miguel and Miraflores on the Pacific side. These locks allow ships to navigate the 85-foot elevation difference between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans, with Gatun Lake playing a central role in this process. This artificial lake holds an immense amount of water, enough to provide a navigable channel across the Isthmus of Panama and to supply the canal locks with the needed water volume to operate. Ships crossing the Panama Canal go through several stages, each with unique mechanisms and equipment. A common sight in port landscapes is tugboats maneuvering ships. While these boats look small next to massive container ships, they are powerful enough to move the world's largest vessels. It's all about control. With skilled tugmasters on duty, they push, pull, and steer the vessel into position, making sure she lines up perfectly before entering the locks. Inside the locks, the passage of Panamax ships is assisted by electric locomotives called mules. Mules run on rails along the entire length of the lock chambers. Like tugboats, these electric-powered mules don't pull or push the ship, but they keep it centered. Attached to the vessel with strong cables, mules maintain constant tension, preventing the ship from drifting or scraping against the concrete walls.
Neo-Panamax vessels, on the other hand, rely on both mules and tugboats inside the locks. After the ship enters the lock, the gates close behind it, sealing off the chamber like a giant bathtub. Weighing hundreds of tons, the gates are operated remotely from control centers, where operators use advanced hydraulic and electromechanical systems to open and close them. Next, gravity takes over. Water from Gatun Lake either rushes in to lift the ship or drains out to lower it, depending on the direction of travel. It's similar to going upstairs by 85 feet, walking several steps forward, and then going downstairs. This means the first lock raises the vessel to the level of the second lock, and the process continues. Filling or draining a lock chamber takes only about eight minutes. In addition to merchant ships, the Panama Canal also facilitates the passage of many naval ships, playing a key role in global military logistics. The U.S. military's Sea Lift Command, or MSC, often uses the canal to move its fleet of sea lift and ocean transportation vessels. Crewed by military personnel and civilians, Sea Lift Command vessels are always on the move, making sure all U.S. ships worldwide get what they need when they need it. Whether transporting essential supplies like food and fresh water or fuel and equipment, MSC keeps the Navy and Marines mission ready, no matter where they are. This includes underway replenishment or unwrap operations, where crews transfer fuel and supplies between moving ships while underway. Among the key assets transiting this canal are maritime pre-positioning ships, or NPS, massive cargo vessels that are preloaded with military equipment and supplies. Ready to sustain Navy services at short notice, usually in less than 24 hours. The 33-ship fleet is organized into three squadrons, each carrying enough equipment and supplies to support a 17,000-person Marine Air Ground Task Force for up to 30 days. Prepositioning ships can be identified easily by their black holes and offloading capabilities, such as cranes or roll-on, roll-off ramps that allow them to operate without the need for port facilities. Pre-positioning ships are quite big. The Baldomero Lopez, or TAK-3010, for instance, measures more than 670 feet in length and 100 feet in width, with a displacement of 44,330 tons. As a roll-on, roll-off, or RO, RO vessel, 162,500 square feet of the Baldomero Lopez is reserved to transport military vehicles and handling equipment in addition to more than 500 TEUs that can be transported on deck. During Maritime Prepositioning Force Exercise, MPFEX-20, U.S. Marines and sailors worked together to safely offload lighter ridge equipment from the Baldomero Lopez. 
the barge was carefully lowered into the sea by cranes while remaining attached to the hole to prevent shifting. This system, known as the Improved Navy Lighterage System, or INLS, allows cargo to be ferried to shore in areas where conventional port facilities are unavailable or inadequate. Once in the water, the lighterage floats freely. The next exercise is to offload Humvees onto it, a highly complex mission requiring the full concentration of everyone involved. The vehicles are first freed from their securing brackets and moved onto the deck, where they are fitted with lifting slings. Deck personnel then attach the slings to the crane for hoisting. Once over the side, the vehicles are carefully lowered onto the waiting barge, where crew members immediately secure it using wheel cocks and tie downs to prevent movement. Another way to discharge vehicles is through the carrier ramps, as seen during exercise Trident Juncture 2018. In this operation, military vehicles, including Humvees, trucks, and armored personnel carriers, were driven directly off the ship onto a pier in Europe, where they were deployed to enhance collaboration between US and NATO allies. NATO countries collaborate across various security domains, from peacekeeping operations to disaster relief efforts, with one of the pressing concerns being the fight against piracy. While many view maritime piracy as a thing of the past, the maritime industry considers it a serious threat to global trade, maritime security, and the safety of seafarers. Pirates use ship, or boat-borne attackers, to seize vessels with the goal of robbing cargo and other valuable goods. The harm it causes to the global economy is substantial, as they delay deliveries, increase insurance costs, and put billions of dollars worth of goods at risk each year. Beyond economic losses, piracy directly threatens the lives of seafarers, who are often taken hostage, subjected to violence, or killed. Historically, piracy occurred in channels with predetermined routes. Today, the United States and NATO countries continue to cooperate in counter-piracy operations. Thanks to the Standing NATO Maritime Group, or SNMG, NATO ships regularly patrol high-risk areas, providing protection for commercial vessels and deterring pirate activities. One notable example of NATO's efforts was Operation Allied Protector, conducted by SNMG-1. During this operation, a multinational force was deployed to spot suspicious or falsely identified vessels in the Gulf of Aden and off the coast of Somalia. Gunners on board these ships are highly trained to rapidly assess threats and neutralize them using precision firepower when necessary. Additionally, the U.S. is engaged with French forces in joint anti-piracy training exercises.
These exercises are designed to hone maritime rescue procedures and enhance partner capabilities. Participants in these exercises simulate anti-piracy scenarios, ensuring rapid response and rescue of crew. From the Panama Canal to high-risk zones, collaboration remains the key to facilitating maritime routes and securing the future of international shipping. That is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.